Tony Hawkins has got a podcast. I hope he's better at this than he is washing the kit because he was fucking useless. Well, we've just been talking about whether status quo are better than Queen, and I've said they are, but Tony said they're not. So there you status go. Status quo don't even come into it. They're not even. No. Tony, they're not called no. the mighty quo by accident, mate. I'll be honest. The mighty quo. That's what I call them anyway. Uh, no, just, no, no, we're not talking about this anymore. Okay, no more quo then. Down, down, deeper and down. Sorry, I was away. Queen, there. however, you started it. What? And then continued it. No, I don't like Queen. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm nothing good about Queen at well, all. Name one bad Queen song. Well, all of them. Bohemian Rhapsody for a start. <gasps> that's possibly. You the wash wor- your whole mouth out now. That is possibly the worst song that's ever got to number one, and that's a bold statement. But I think it's that will stand up in a court of law. In fact, I would get Boris Johnson's lawyers to defend me on that if I was honest with you. I would. How's that for topical? Every number one oh, oh. in the last twenty years has been worse than no, that. No, it hasn't been. And I don't think I could name one, but on, I'd still be right. You would be. Anyway, did we go to any football matches? Anyone that's on this call go to a football match? Yes, Pop uh, Team on one. Did you we, go? Uh, at young uh, no, Andrew didn't go. in the uh, in the Spearman Barge. We trundled on down, <laughs> or up, and then down. And what a very nice place it is. Their new supporters bar totally took oh, me back. It was absolutely fabulous. Did the, you, I did say that, that some of the Akron fans are already giving him grief, saying, well, that money should be going into the first team. They're just so short-sighted. Yeah. I saw that, and the other thing that they've probably done wrong is that they've called it Coley's, but they're on their manager's back, so that might have to change. But beyond those, I thought it was a fabulous place, really, yes. really good. I um, remember what was that pint? Me and Rob were drinking Turco, Taco, Burger, Mag- Maggi, 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 something like that. That was a really nice pint. That was as well. And then yeah. they let you walk through the stadium to get to your seat on the other side of the stadium. I mean, say what you like about Andy Hull. I mean, I don't dislike him. He's just very vocal all the time. But he's got the right idea. And I, I know that most away places do have home and away fans mixing majority of the time. But it's very unusual to be able to walk through home areas to get to your seat. So... I like his style. He's sort of thinking unlike anybody else. I like it. Which is good. Sorry, if I might interject, so I was under the impression as well that not just Accrington Stanley as a football club, past and present, Andy Holt in particular really dislikes us. So for him to be hospital, hospit- somebody say it for me. Hospitalised. be that word. Hospitalized. Well, he wasn't actually. He wasn't actually there. I didn't see him. He, but he the stewards were really him. nice. Boycotted, didn't they? They called us over as you you sort of came through from where we parked, and they they were sort of saying, "Oh, come on in here, come on in here, come and have a drink." And it was yeah, um, it was great, really really good day. As for the football, first half was all right. Second half was a bit nail biting and a bit breath holding, but then this is the Don, so what's new there? Um, but we did it. And the feeling at the final whistle was worth whatever it was, 200 miles of sitting in the car. We had a car full, so it was a little bit cosy. Um, but, yeah, it was worth it, I reckon. Yeah, I'd say um, certainly, I mean, it, I think the difference Louis makes was only strengthened this, this week with that overall team performance. I didn't think he would make that much difference, but he clearly does. Um, Jack Tucker, again, pretty much faultless. In fact, they all were. I I can't... I mean, again, we weren't exactly playing a team that was going to be threatening anywhere near the top of the league, but we're just as bad as them (laughs) in reality this season. So any win's a good win at this point. 
I thought the first half we were fantastic. Um, and even though the second half was a bit ropey, I thought that we were quite unlucky not to walk away from there with at least two or three goals. Max Dean's one came incredibly close and Isa had a good effort. Well, although he didn't finish it very well, it was a, on any other day, Isa gets that at least on target that went over the bar. Um, I, I thought we, without being fantastic at this moment in time, I'm not, necessarily after fantastic I'm after a bit of grit and determination and we, we saw that I thought in abundance on Saturday yeah. I think so I think look, what Tony and I were saying in the car coming back was that certainly in that second half you know it was mostly sort of at their end and, and you felt like they were working quite hard but the only fear was that they were going to score accidentally just yeah. because it was all buzzing around their box it didn't really feel like they were going to have a proper considered threat. Um, I said probably should have scored from that free kick. I mean, he did the other week and done it before. Um, Max Dean, we had a reasonably spirited discussion over whether or not it was a last man challenge because Tony was sitting in a slightly different place. We were stood behind the goal. And so uh, for where we were standing, we were all convinced it was a last man challenge and the, the, the bloke yeah. should have gone. Um, but Tony, I think you thought differently. Yeah, he, he was. Right. Good, so. It was in the. Uh, it was directly in line with me on the 18 yard line, and Max Dean was actually already turning away. Yep. Presumably to come off his left foot. I don't. Is he? Is he right footed? Because I think that that miss had been playing on his mind. Because he's obviously gagging for minutes, and he rushed that first chance and should have done a lot better but no I don't think there was I mean the bloke probably fouled him as in did enough to you know stop him but he wasn't past him and he wasn't really that close to go and there would have been covering defenders because they kept quite a good line the way that uh, I saw defense. it was, the way that I saw it was um, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen it back to because it wasn't on the highlights but the way that I saw it was Dean looked like he could feel the defender breathing down his back and was trying to shield the ball by turning around. And by the time that he was in the in the in the movement of trying to uh, shield the ball, he was kind of almost facing backwards anyway. And that's what brought him down was his own movement and the defender hitting him on his back. So by the yeah, time he I did go it, down, it's definitely I think it's definitely a foul, but it can't be a red card because he would have been facing the other way anyway. Yeah, and the defenders the defenders thinking if I let him go here he is going to be inside me and oh that's what she said but I don't know I don't it was a foul but it wasn't enough to it wasn't in the right place on the pitch he was facing the wrong way the defender knew what he was doing but it wasn't like he was through on goal or anything like that so yeah I think other than other than Jamie's save on 55 minutes which was I think he made it look more dramatic than it had to be. I don't actually think it was that great an effort. I don't know if you can remember it, but they had one decent chance that Jamie, uh, you know, pulled away out for a corner. And um, other than that, as Lisa said earlier, I, I thought it was the only... I, I made notes on the game, actually, and I said, uh, you know, that, that we're defending well, but the pressure's getting to us, and there's a scrappy goal in here somewhere from a corner or a, or a set piece, and that's the way that I thought they were going to score if they if they were going to. But credit to us, I thought we threw ourselves on the line. I thought Watson, especially, you know, we've given Tucker credit, of course, but I thought Watson and Harvey um, really did get amongst it, even if it wasn't pretty at times and it didn't always work out. They very much got stuck in. So they, the, so they did in the last ten minutes. There was a reasonable sensible amount of game management as well there, there was you know kicking it into Rose Ed and getting it away from, from the danger which was just pleasing to see we just haven't seen it for a while um, I was, so I was yeah it was, uh, it was better to a new, well he said he was there as a neutral and he said that our time wasting was horrendous and it was but according to others that were listening to the home commentary on the radio they basically said Yes, MK Dons are wasting time, but they're not really doing anything anybody else wouldn't do. It's all right when your team does it, but if someone else is doing it against you, then obviously you don't like it, do you? Basically, that's what it is. Well, Stop. this is it, isn't it? You always, you always remember the things that go against you. Yeah. You never remember the lucky breaks or the you know, the dodgy penalties that you got and all that sort of thing. So I could be making this up completely, but didn't they 
we had quite a dramatic game against them last season just before we played AFC at home and um, I can remember that game they had a man sent off for tackling Daniel Harvey quite recklessly and I'm pretty oh, sure him in the nuts didn't they yeah he did yeah and I'm 90% sure that day that we were complaining about how much they were time wasting because we were battering them uh, oh <laughs> yeah that was one of those occasions where they were time wasting when they were 1-0 down if I remember rightly uh, to stop to to prevent themselves getting an absolute kick in from us. Oh, how I would swap that for where we are now, eh? Good lord! But it was it was it was made all the sweeter by um, Plymouth beating them on Tuesday as well, and they got another red card. Although I was going to say their number forty goalie. Fancy them having a forty man squad. Their number forty goalie was he did a reasonable job actually. He did okay. But um yeah that apparently they got another red card on Tuesday. So they're gonna really struggle with the next few games. They do seem to have a discipline problem. Ours seems to have withered away of the last two games, hopefully and shall not return. Um but a couple of wins makes a massive difference to confidence and Louis being back. I mean, the, you have to ask yourself the question, when Louis retires in 10 to 15 years' time, what are we going to do then? Did he not get booked Can't on look. Saturday, Louis? Yeah, he did, yeah, yeah for did. nothing. Was it justified or because it read online that people well, actually, seen it was a bit Well, actually, it's for nothing, but it probably was justified because you don't know what he said. But he's normally very careful with his words. He's oh, yeah, he really is. He? He's renowned for it. I'll generally say, are oh, you a fucking idiot? <laughs> instead of saying, you're a fucking idiot. Uh, which really... Yeah, that's a good point, a Tony. big difference between the two, yeah. you know? Semantics, Tony, um, but I, I agree with him. Yeah, yeah. And you can always point to the old uh, captain's armband as well. But, I mean, the referees and the lines would know exactly who he is and what to expect. So, that just surprises me he doesn't get booked more often, really. And, Daniel Harvey as well was taking over that role, isn't he, while Louis was away. But, uh, yeah, he did get booked, but um, otherwise we didn't really... There was, it wasn't a dirty game. I mean, I know that they're not they're not renowned for their uh, pretty football and they can be a bit rough and tumble, but I wouldn't say... I think they're just, they, they just lack quality, uh, which has been consistently shown over the course of the season. They just look like a plucky team, if that makes sense. They are yeah. what they are, aren't they? And they're, that's, I mean, they're, they're probably punching above their weight by being in League One and staying in League One like they have. And they probably won't be any more than that. But I, I mean, I like him as a club, even if Andy Holt doesn't like us. I, I don't really care. I like his club and I like the way he runs it. I think the problem well, they've got is point. that they've spent too much money in that clubhouse and not enough money on the playing staff, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I mean, what could they possibly do with all that money that they're going to earn from that? <laughs> well, eh? well, what could they possibly do with it? I'm just seeing how... Maybe well, some... attended 3,000, well, 2,900 and something, and there were 290 some odd of us, so it's pretty small attendance. They need us in the clubhouse to pay for it. I yeah, I mean that that place must have cost a few quid because it it's not just a a shed with a bar and some chairs. Is it better than Lewington, tech- Tony? I can't. I'm finding that hard to believe, mate. They probably got twenty grand of TV screens on the walls. Half of them were showing the rugby, and half of them were showing football. It yeah. was, um, and they were big, big TVs. No, so right, and the so, toilets, so hotel quality toilets in there. They were fabulous. So, so from, uh, yes, from a from a from a range of Red Dot Bar and Crawley's Supporters Bar what sort of range are we looking at in terms of quality it, it's basically the Saddler's Bar but not from the 1980s oh, <laughs> <laughs> can I yeah. wax lyrical about um, Sully Kai Kai's goal please yeah go on oh, it was a very nice goal um, so when he cut inside I was screaming at the TV um, about the fact that he, he didn't pass it I thought he missed a chance when he cut inside I thought Ives was basically in the middle and I've watched it back a hundred times and actually I'm the idiot because he was never going to get a ball in for Ives that wouldn't have got clawed away but what I loved about it was that he gives it to, to Conor Grant runs on the outside and without 
Grant even taking his eye off the ball. He knew he knows that he's running past him, and it's a wonderful little cut inside and a great finish. And I mean, he had a fantastic game anyway, Kai Kai for in all areas defensively, in attack. I thought he was he was wonderful, but that goal was probably. I mean, I might be underplaying other moments of the season that I can't remember, but probably the best bit of football that's led to a goal this season. Without There's it not being a lot to choose from, fantastic. let's be honest. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's not, <laughs> it's not even, you know, that, that's that's just a goal from, you know, we, we had plenty of them last season and you don't want to keep parking on to last season because it's yesterday's news, but um, that was a goal straight out of, you know, last season when players understood their roles and understood where each other are going to be. I mean, Conor Grant, not even... He obviously would have had a shout from Kai Kai. Of course, he would. Look, you know, he's running in behind them, whatever. But the actual execution of it and the yeah, um, and it's something we nervousness. It's something we've been missing as well. Is whereas last season we had lots of players who could turn games. Twine, obviously, Parrot, um, Harry Darling, making seventy-yard runs and scoring. That's something we've been missing greatly this season. So it's nice to see a good individual. Like a good build up to it, but the the finish itself and the way that he made the goal for himself, that's the difference. Uh, you know, without that, it nil nil, we'd have been uh, behind them still in the bottom yeah. four. So, yeah, if we get if we can win a few games one nil, I'll be happy with that. He started for Sierra Leone tonight, isn't he? He is. Yes, he he's better not get hurt. injured. He better not get hurt. I hope he gets well, we got one. Luco back now, haven't we? So he should be back for Saturday, whether he'll start or not. I don't know. know. Let's hope I don't have to do more hysterical screaming, eh, guys? We uh, like that. I like we that like that hysterical screaming. <laughs> it's been a long time since me, me and John have heard a woman scream. Yeah, I'll like be honest that. like that. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember when that was. <laughs> it was for Albie, it was about half hour ago. Yeah. Happening there and <laughs> two minutes in. But anyway, yeah, that's um, yeah, two yeah, minutes well, is a minute and a half like right. longer than it normally took. To be quite honest, with you. <laughs> <laughs> you can stick your what was it? Go, <laughs> yeah. go stick that up your ass. Oh, you know, we got to say it better. <laughs> anyway, by the by, but yeah, Leco will be back, so hopefully that will sort of change. Uh, the dynamic a bit for for Saturday. No, that will come on to Saturday in the fullness of time, but for for. For me, I think the, the first half was really, really nice. There was just some lovely movement. It was really assured and, and confident. Um, and the only sort of sharp intake of breath was um, kind of, I don't know, a third of the way through the first half. And Jamie, in a rare moment of activity, had to punch a ball away. And the the Aki player went to the floor holding his head and the referee sort of waved him away and wandered off. Um at which point Jamie went down clutching his wrist and that looked a bit nastier he looked as if he was in quite a lot of pain and um, physio came on and magic sprayed or iced or whatever we, was they do but um, we were sort of uh, there was a bit of a breath hold there because if we'd have lost Jamie that would have been Frank a, a, a really sweet man I'm sure but I, I just want, want Jamie in goal and um, yeah that was a bit of a moment Oh, his reaction after the game as well was was nice. Yes. To see how much he's, he cares. And he hasn't had the best of seasons, and that's not really his fault. But it was nice to see like, genuine reactions. Uh, and not any sort of... Because the fans, obviously, and that includes us, have given him a lot of grief this season about the way they've performed. Um, but I don't think anyone can... From from that reaction anyway on Saturday, anyone can doubt their uh, their commitment at the moment, and mm -hmm. that was what we were asking for. You know, we keep turning up and watching you. Pay us back when, for that. Yeah, you know, when Jacko came along, he went all the way along the seated area, um, and then he kind of walked past the goal and did the fist pumpy clappy thing, and then uh, he got to the end, and all of a sudden he sort of thought about it and he went no and he came back and he shook everybody's hand all behind the goal much to the discontent of the stewards but um, he went all the way along the line I, I don't know whether it was all 290 of us but he had a good go at it and it really it wasn't far off no it, it, it <laughs> made, uh, made a difference uh, you know um, and so yeah it just feels a little bit different a little bit better than it has done 
earlier in the season so long may that continue I'm not yeah. falling for that nonsense this time from I know I hate to have to be like a weight blanket but that nonsense see that kind of stuff I am 100% not getting engaged in that ever again with any football manager that comes to this club because it will always end spectacularly badly that so I'm just saying <laughs> no by all means do I'm it I'm never I mean, going to fall in love until the next time no I'm not, no I'm not because yeah. like you know we get suckered right in you know for the last well, especially the one you know previous to the last one I'm not falling for that again good luck to him and I'm you know I'm glad he does it and I'm glad everyone that had their hand you know shook and said the old fist pump oh well done mate but you know it's not for me that kind of stuff just get the points mate a quick turn round a quick clap to the fans applause to you know the away fans like a thumbs up get in the dressing room don't be shaking everyone's hand there that's a moratorium and another moratorium is we don't call is, them jackal it is different I think it is different because it's an away game as well. No. So yeah. no, it, isn't. it does feel it does feel a bit different. I no. mean the home matches I'm I'm out the door straight away, win, lose or draw, I'm gone. Yeah, and me. But that did feel a little bit uh more I don't know, maybe it is because it's I haven't been to a away game for so long. I forgot what it's I like. It's but the, I think it's the environment as well, because Accrington Stanley is such a small, well, intimate ground that you you I mean we weren't six foot from the back of the net I mean yeah so I think that has a lot of on it as well yeah definitely right shall we move on <laughs> oh, do you yeah. want to say something yeah. I'll be going no, I'll be going to say something go on better, better be good now I've built it up go on no I don't know I just feel like I'll just be joining in for negative sake and starting up again I mean I do I, I, I like the fact that it's um, we've got a, a man who's clearly passionate or at least passes off that he's passionate um, but at least he's trying if he is passing it off so that's great um, firstly if he's going to fist pump the crowd he needs to do at least three I think one's a bit but well, there's no point doing it then you do one no, no uh, that's half our stuff you only do you only do one so you go you build it up and you go hey no, you got to do it three times mate come on I sent I sent a, a long winded message to Anthony from Chilo years ago when Russell Martin first came up to the cow shed and I said you fucking tell it to do three and the next time he finally did three so uh, I told him Tell Jacko this, and he hasn't listened. So, um, I think Jacko did two. But he's got to, he's got to do three. It's not good enough, Lisa. But no, like I, I do, I do. I think after at Port Vale, having in the week he he he'd been at Lincoln and came right up to the fans and showed a bit of energy. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm absolutely not expecting him to do it every single game, win, lose, or draw. And I understand that when you've lost a game at like at Port Vale, it was quite angry and venomous from the from the away I get all that but you can't if you're going to do it this is why you should just shouldn't do it because you can't just come up to the fans when you win or you get a draw and you can engage them and, and, and do a real you know come on let's let's do this and then when you lose a Port Vale do a little jog up to the away end clap three times and then jog back you know that's why I'm kind of in Jersey's camp of just get this fucking season done and it, do all that fanning uh, you know all that sort of well, it just it, the, 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 the long winded way that I'm putting around it is it just feels a little bit damn at Fleetwood it does a bit I can't just argue with that do it. <laughs> well I totally disagree with you you miserable bastards I'm not being miserable <laughs> Tony I'm being realistic mate I'm being realistic we've been suckered like that before and I'm not prepared to get caught up in it again I've, I'm just I've been not. hurt before yeah I have yeah <laughs> I've been hurt before and I'm not doing it again right I'm moving on Tony what have we got you got any emails tweets any of that palaver I've got emails. No, no, the uh, plural there. Now I've got a tweet. Emails. Shall I start with my tweet? Because I've only got Go on one. Because I've got four emails. Oh well, I'll start with mine. I've got one here from someone called the Tartan Cyclists, and he oh, said, right, "Okay." He says, "Everyone knows how much I love England, and I am so glad that I've lived here for so long." And I'd like to wish the English national team all the best for tomorrow night. And he finishes off with, David Martin was a goalie, hashtag stating the blindingly obvious. So I don't know who that is, Tony, but he seems quite enthusiastic about England, whoever he is. It could well be the same rag, that email I'm looking at at the moment. What does he say? Did he start off with, come on England? Come on the three lines? No, he, he starts with, shit Don's pints. Oh, so depending on how you say that, because it took me a while, 
But what I think it's supposed to say is shit Don's pints rather than shit Don's pints. That's it. See, it's quick as you can. Why would shit you? Don's why would you? Why would you shit pints of Don's? Anyway, you? he says, "Good evening, gents. Evening. Hope you are both doing well." I am. I'm much better. Are either of you? Fam- are either of you familiar with the Instagram Twitter account at shit London Guinness? No. It's fantastic. Look up if you haven't. That isn't. Don't so, do it. It's kicked pubs into Lo- in London into touch for fear of appearing there by pouring Guinness properly and no, it's great imp- It hasn't. Uh, maybe you should start a at shit Don's pints page. No, it would be a great follow. It might kick the stadium bars into touch. That would never happen. No, well, it's not what's the it. worst pint you've had at the ground? Uh, the last well, one. The last to be quite one honest, honestly, and the one before <laughs> the one that, before that was pretty ropey as well. Before that, yeah. <laughs> all so of them. in general, yeah. Most of them, if not all. If I'd not, say. I'm just going to say, yeah, it's difficult to choose. I'll choose the last one as and a, the first one, and every and all the others in between. To be quite honest, as a rough estimation yeah. of uh, all the pints that I've had, yeah, I'd say just say all of them. Really, yeah. is probably the best oh, way to go it. about that. Except for the beginning of the season when they'd clean the pipes out for the Euros. I must admit, not when I came back, the Euros. I've swapped from Guinness to Cam Daniel, and I must admit the Cam Daniel is pretty nice. It has it's had quite a nice drink that, to be quite honest. Even out of that. Better, it is, but it hasn't. It's not, the yeah, it's not. It's gone downhill as the season's progressed. Because I, I can used afford to drink it. I'm loaded, to be quite honest. Get money coming out of my ears at the minute. Throwing it away. Yeah, oh, bless you. Have you even put the central <laughs> heating on, to be quite honest with you? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't know things were that good. Yeah, I'm throwing it away, Tony. It's gone out of fashion at the minute. Blimey. The other three. Oh, three. We're on topic. Uh, <laughs> oh, and Imagine that. To say something about Australians and St. Swithens or something or other. Uh, so, the Seek It travel agent is what they've called themselves. Right, okay, that's, it says, that's not the real name. This is my first time e- e- emailing, so be kind. Right, oh. Just be kind. Be kind. I'm Just let you us. know that the keyboard player for the automatic worked at Cardiff PC World with my ex husband. I knew until that. Until he stud- famous one day and it was definitely 2006 oh by the way thanks for the 87 people that pointed that out to me who clearly listened to last week's podcast heard me say 2013 <laughs> and then went off without listening to the rest of the podcast no. to then message me and say it was 2006 yeah I know that because we spoke about it later on in the podcast we know that Listen to no, the whole no. podcast, then message me anyway his name was Alex Penny do with this information what you will. Nothing. My favourite card <laughs> was Henry Lawrence telling him his sister is fit. Albie, can you enlighten us? I'm guessing somebody just shouted, Henry Lawrence, your sister is fit. So that Sloop John B song that last week got um, shunned for being shit, which I concur with, by the way. Every song that we have to... Your sister is fit. Your sister is fit. Henry, that's what I'm guessing. I bet you any money. Oh, that. Out, that, so is, that is a great guess. I'm going to say it probably was that then. It made him laugh while he was warming up at Peterborough. That was the only good thing about that game, to be fair. I don't even know if he has a sister. <laughs> I can't be asked to Google it. <laughs> I'll uh, tell you what was, what was funny just while we're on this topic. When we play, who was that crap team we played? Lisa, you'll know this. You've got the uh, football encyclopedia brain. Who did we play in that cup game at home in the FA Cup of some non league team? Is it Truro? We did play Truro. No, who who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Was, was it? Yeah, we played Truro this season. We played Truro yeah. fairly early on, didn't we? August time. Was it? Was it Truro? Or was it some? Anyway, whatever. We played. It some was Truro, team. I think. Yeah, we were talking throughout the first half. Me Taunton. and my team about Trump. Taunton. Taunton. That's the one. Anyway, we were talking in the first half about how fit Daniel Harvey's missus was. For some reason, we were going through our Instagram and. Um, my mate, for some my, reason, my, right? My, yeah. My, yeah, yeah. My mate uh, looks around and uh, she sat directly behind us. Out of all the two and a half thousand or whatever it was that was there that day, you know, I couldn't have gone any fucking better. I don't, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't quite know how we'd forgotten this one. It was the 5th of November 2022 against Taunton Town and we won by six goals to nil. Six yeah, that seems day. like a long time ago. Stop! Stop! That does. That's uh, on the way down to Plymouth. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I can't enlighten any more on that song. I'm afraid. Right, but we're going to say it was Sloop John B. Then. Uh, so they say. I also like the Will Grigg chant. 
somehow I doubt we'll hear it again. Nice win to win. The, uh, nice to win to you on the bounce. I want Robbo back, but don't think it's going to happen. I miss watching him angrily shouting from my seat in Club Red. Even if the game was shit, he was entertaining. Anyway, I still think we're on a league tour, uh, league two tour next season. We're just about on the. Uh, we're just about okay in the first half. Shit in the second half every game, and we have hung on for the last six points by the seat of our pants. April is scary. Thanks, the secret travel agent. This half, this first half, second half thing. Seems to have switched round. Yeah, it does, yeah, because it's not be crap and yeah. it's half and a bit better in the second, yeah. So we can we can do one half, which is a bit disappointing, really, in the scheme of things when the game has two halves, but there you go. Paul Harris. Oh, he's a tall. He's birthday about today, Andrew. by the way. Wish him happy birthday. Is it? Yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday Paul. Paul. Come on everyone, wish uh, him happy when... birthday. He says, went to the Wham Stadium, a good day out. Disappointed I didn't see any whippets, greyhounds or blokes with cloth caps. A hard-fought 1-0. Uh, nice supporters bar, and I think the first time I've seen pot noodles on the menu. We were in the seated stand right next to the Aki fans. One kid kept shouting, sit down, shut up, and then fell over and hurt his knee. That's good. karma right there. Just <laughs> over three hours to get home. The M6 toll does save time as there was hardly anybody on it. More come on Saturday. Fingers crossed for another three points. Best to you both, Paul Harris. Cheers, Paul. And Simon Osborne. Yes, Simon, I didn't reply to you on Twitter, but I have got your email, and I'm just about to read it, so listen carefully. Uh, firstly, <laughs> cheers, gents, for adding in my comments to the podcast last week. But my favourite Don's chant in the 18 years of following the club, and I've had a few, so I'd be last year uh, it'd be last year's Scott Twine chant super Scotty nobody can stop him franchise get bad because how funny it was when Lincoln sang it and then AFC are you listening how do you feel after two wins on the bounce and does John think we are still going down no I think we're going to stay up to be quite honest Change my it does opinion. change from week to week, really, doesn't yeah, it? I mean, we're rubbish at this. I'm we nothing. are really rubbish. We've said we're going down. We've said there's no chance of us going down. We, oh, I just just let them get on with it. I say I'm nothing if not very very fickle, Tony. Everyone who listens to this should know that. Well, <laughs> we, we've actually got. Well, I suppose the person who's taken over from me is the most optimistic Don's fan, Lisa, who is just beyond reasonable limits when it comes to optimism but I like that uh, I've become more realistic because I was generally not but and this whole thing about in that last email and Lisa said it about it being really nervy seat of the pants stuff I'm not feeling that at the moment last two games even though we were one nil up for quite a while I didn't really feel that those terrifying nerves that I should get especially you know, when the board goes up and you're thinking right that's it they're going to score seven goals now in the two minutes of added time that they've got I'm not feeling that at the moment and that's a bit of a shame and I, I, need, more, I need to get it back I felt it more on Saturday than I did last Saturday against Cambridge I mean I, I was saying to people around me because um, they were proper like people were just head in hands and some people would turn, would turn their back to the pitch and I was like what are you nervous about? there's nothing going on at that end of the field at all like, what are you worried about they, Cambridge was shy Saturday as I said um, I, I just I, I just saw a scrappy own goal or you know a, a, a corner going in that deflects off somebody's arse I don't know I, I saw that happening so that was quite nervous but nerve wracking but um, generally speaking I agree Tony I mean I, I didn't feel it at all. I think, I, I think from my point of view, I mean, Tony's quite right. I do look at the world through rose-tinted spectacles and I'm very well known for it in not just football, in all aspects of my life because it's my self-defence mechanism. And then when you fear that that hope is going to get taken away from you, um, that's what makes you nervy. And it doesn't necessarily have terribly much to do with what's going on on the pitch. I mean... I spent most of last season with my fingernails in my mouth wondering what the heck was going to happen. And, then, you know, it's completely unjustified. So I think it is quite a visceral sort of response as to not wanting to be disappointed and not daring to hope. Um, but it's 
if you look at it objectively, then you guys are quite right. There isn't really anything that should cause you concern or, or worry, but there is because we're there by the skin of our teeth and we've got to stay there now. Yeah, where well, we have. I mean, it's all very good winning two in a row, but that's that's only two of those remaining games that we've got where we've got to maintain what sort of level of form that we currently in which is let's be honest two yeah. wins in a row in this season is is a bit of a is a bit of an achievement really twice is that the first time we've done it since december did they say yeah and don't forget that last win at home was the first one on a saturday all season all season which yeah. is pretty horrendous when you think about it you can't you, you can't justify that you know your home games are the ones where if you are struggling that's where you're hoping you're going to pick up your points and we haven't done that at all this season uh, it's a little bit late to start that but I'm quite happy and if they want to continue to do that feel free uh, cause it I think if we can win on Saturday you would breathe a bit easier because then all we've got to do is just track the Huntington results and do better than them and then we'll be okay but it, it, Oxford is probably the one team that could help us out a bit more, give us a bit more breathing space. Yeah. Talking of which, on the way back in the car, as you know, I'm not privy to the uh, the old Don's Facebook group because <laughs> I, if I did read it, I'd have an aneurysm. Lisa sent me a screenshot of it, which I don't know why I'm searching in the messages I got from you, John. I should probably be looking at the ones I got from Lisa. Where is it? Here we go. So this is from the MK Don's Facebook group, and I just I'll just read it. Don't yes, name we're them, just Six points. No, I'm not going to name them because I don't know them, so I'm not going to name them. But yeah, they probably know who they are, and other people will by me reading this. It says, "Yes, we've just gained six points with two clean sheets, but sadly, I'm not convinced we'll stay up." Fair enough. We've been absolutely pee poor all season, and these wins could just be some law of average wins interesting law of averages wins okay I'm not sure that works in football but uh, as things stand we don't deserve to stay up and in all honesty probably need to win all our remaining games to really salvage the wreckage of this season Albie <laughs> only you could see Albie right now <laughs> right you Albie then wrote that was yeah. it right there Albs <laughs> breathe man breathe <laughs> <laughs> I'm googling it. I'm on it right now. What is it? MK Don. So we 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 would have to win all our remaining games to stay up. Now, if we won all our remaining games, we would stay up. <laughs> we would definitely stay up, but we'd also be somewhere around mid table. That would suggest, also based on this law of averages thing, that if we were to do that, then everybody else should as well. I mean, I'm no mathematician. Here you are. <laughs> you are. You're bloody mathematician, you idiot. <laughs> oh, talking of which, not that it's to do with maths, but Lisa's a Wordle buff as well, John. Oh, I love the old Wordle. Oh, yes. Every morning. And Wordle as well, which I don't think you do. But, no, I, uh... I take the dogs out for a walk. I get up really, really early. Now, I've started... I actually get up... This will, this, I worked it out this morning. I get up... Two and a half hours before I have to leave to go to work. It's absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, that's me. I take the dog that's out. I, about, well. I take the dogs out at quarter to six. Wander around Stony for half an hour or whatever it is. Come back, make up my packed lunch, have a second breakfast. I have my breakfast when I get up there, like a hobbit. When I come back, I then have a second breakfast. When I'm having my second breakfast, I sit down and do wordle every day. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you should do Kordal as well. No, I ain't got time for that, Tony. I'd have to get up at four o'clock instead of five if I did that. So, no. Put my stop to it. Just, yeah. just quickly going back to that, that email, like touching on, touching on it a little bit. I think if we win on Saturday against Morecambe, which I'm confident we will do because we beat them in the cup. I, I don't know what cup games particularly say, but I thought they were absolute pants when we played them and we played them away and they were pants as well. Um, if we beat them on Saturday then I'm looking at going into so we're talking about games that are coming up and April being scary 
you're looking at going to Wickham and thinking, you know what, you wouldn't mind settling for a point there, although we want three, but you lose, say, a few weeks ago and you wouldn't put it past us losing to Morecambe and you're looking at Wickham as an even more scary one because you're thinking it is all these games start becoming must win with one against Cambridge one against Atkinson win against Wick, uh, Morecambe that's you know nine points and then if you get a point away you've suddenly got a full match unbeaten run and you take it into a tricky home tie against Portsmouth who have been off it this season you might fancy your chances if you're going in there with a run of form so you know it, 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 we've done what we've had to do with these two games that have just passed us we have to do it on Saturday and this mini league he's been talking about we can say we've done our bit there and we just sort of tackle it on head on you know the rest of it well I think we can all agree that we can at least say that we should beat Morecambe on Saturday you want to go on to that then based on uh, go on to that yes well it's more it's more about you know we were saying we've been everybody's been saying for a few weeks now uh, March yeah, is going to make or break us. Yeah. Um, we've got those six points there. We would hope for at least, at the very least, a point on Saturday, which then leads us into. You think we can get a point at Wickham? Do you, Abby? Oh, well, I don't. I don't see why not. Because I, I do. I'm one of these people that firmly believes that derby games and games that have a bit of edge on it, without using the cliche, I hate cliches of a passion, but form does genuinely go out the window in, in games like that we take uh, the best part of a thousand away hopefully I mean it's going to be really embarrassing if we don't but uh, we take a, a good crowd away the, the players come out roaring knowing that they've done their job for the past three weeks and then go into a game like that you could imagine imagine a, a situation where Anthony Stewart's back he'll want to play do you know what I mean things like that Kai Kai will want to play well against his old team all yeah. these sort of little subplots come into it and you think on, on a day like that you know, you you do you do hold hope. I would take a point, absolutely a point. I'm not going in there thinking we'll get three or anything, but I'd take a point. And then again, you know, if you if we get out there and say in our last four games we've got say ten points, and we go into a game at Portsmouth at home, who we've got a pretty good record against against them over the past five or six games, and you just think before you know it, we're six unbeaten. Or five or six unbeaten, so you know, just got to hold that hope. But I'll be back. Is in that, I mean, that, that April is very, is very full of games. Uh, there's uh, was one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, seven games throughout April: Wickham, Portsmouth at home, Derby away, Cheltenham at home, Charlton at home, Fleetwood away, and Barnsley away. If you take out from Barnsley's that. What we're we talking, Barnsley, take them out. Maybe Derby, Portsmouth to a certain extent. So there's there's points I reckon in there, but it really, you know, if we if we do if we do win on Saturday, Accrington lose, even Oxford lose, it could be a bit more of a cushion between us and the bottom, you know, bottom four, and we're we're not relying on just one team to cock it up yeah in, an, have... in an ideal world you're looking and thinking hopefully by the time we play Derby hopefully by that you're hoping that we might be able to make some, something like a five point gap from the bottom the bottom of, you know the, the, well, the team so that that would be that would be a win on Saturday and a draw at Wickham and a draw against Portsmouth that's there's your five yeah, so you and the other teams around, you know, below us, dropping, you know. And yeah. Liam's Liam's doing a, a a good job at fucking them up and at continuing Robbo's work and and you're hoping that Atkinson keep falling like a stone. I don't think you have to worry about the likes of Cambridge and Forest Green or whatever going on a run. You just sort of think Morecambe, Oxford, Atkinson, let them drop like a stone and just keep picking up points and hopefully, as I said, the quickest the quickest time that we can build a five point gap and just hope that they keep falling is the best thing that we can do right yeah I mean Bert, Bert have dropped again haven't they yeah, um, they have. but I mean their form's not terrible they've they've won two drawn one lost and uh, lost two out of their last five but I'm just pretty sure they were up sort of 15th 16th uh, yeah but looking at the table right now 
it really is Accrington nicking nicking three points off Morecambe puts us uh, six points uh, sorry five points clear of them uh, and if Accrington lose which it looks likely that they probably will or certainly not going to win we could be four points clear of them as well uh, or a minimum of three hopefully and then Oxford are only a point ahead of us so we could actually leapfrog them as well and be in 19th uh, come five o'clock on Saturday so uh, I just just want to get on with it can we play all these yeah. games like I... one day after the other that would be or like one in the morning one in the afternoon till the season finishes across the course of the next week or so do you think they'd go for that Probably not. Yeah. Uh, lots of ways. I think the goal differences can be really important as well. We can go back to the historical screaming again. After the Sheffield game, I was so despondent that we would put minus 10 through through the goal difference when mm. it'd be looking OK. Um, and now it's looking a bit better because Accrington and Morecambe have both had a, a, a couple of bad results rather than us having good ones. But if we could put a few past Morecambe, that goal difference then starts to look probably worth at least a point, I would say. Um, and I, I quite like the look of that then. But, yeah. yeah it would certainly push us, it would push us nearer Cheltenham's goal difference, uh, who are catchable. Oxford, despite not having won since 2014, a, still only on minus 10, 11 better than us. But yeah, that you know, if we can get a couple of goal swing on Saturday between us and Akron and Morecambe, that could make the difference. And that yeah, those ten goals really did shatter our goal difference when when we lost those two uh, or let let five goals in. And I don't know, I just want to get on with it. I just want to be. I'm just looking for. We're going to uh, we we booked our hotel for Fleetwood. Separate rooms, obviously. <laughs> I'm not sure Lisa's husband would be too happy otherwise. <laughs> not if he's got a share with Dan McCallum anyway. Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, no one wants that, let's be honest. Absolutely Jesus, no one doing wants that. that. Even Dan McCallum doesn't want to. <laughs> he's not going. Who's sharing with him? No, he wouldn't share a room. God, uh, so I share that 75 quid for a room on me, of my own. No, no, I'd be 175 quid if I didn't have to share with him. <laughs> Wait, honestly. <laughs> and it, it, it should be good. I mean, the last time we did a seaside away trip, if we're going to talk about sort of theories and omens, the last time we did a, a, a seaside away trip was Morecambe. And that was a jolly splendid weekend. Yeah, it was a um, bloody good weekend and a 4 0 win, yes. And a 4 0 win. So um, I don't know whether we're going to put four past Fleetwood because they seem to be doing okay. But um, I, I'm hoping that we're going to have a good weekend and see where we get to. Good, um, let's have our predictions for Saturday then. 1 0 Milton Keynes Dons. I'll go an uncharacteristic 4 0 win, as I said last time. 4 0 win for the big man. Lisa. Lisa. 2 0 Milton Keynes Dons. Tony, go on. I'm with, I'm, I'm with Albie here. I'm going to go I'm gonna go 4 0. 4 0, Tony, that's a bold statement. Yeah, that. I, think, I think that now they've got their shooting boots on and they've got a bit of hunger back and they realise that they can win games and score goals their first concern will be scoring the goal rather than trying not to let one in well, which time, sounds man. silly but you ask anybody in football and they say it all the time well, they you get it, into it. a losing mentality get into that losing mentality everything else goes out the window because your only concern is that oh we shouldn't let a goal in it's not let a goal in oh, I hope we don't let a goal in and then you let a goal in right I think that'll do just us then this week yeah? what do you think can I just can I just say one thing before we go? Yes, go on. Can I just say how, how grateful I am that we had an extra guest this week, so we didn't have to have a twenty-minute conversation about fucking season ticket price freezes. Ah, oh, we're not getting involved in that. That'll be next week, and we've got nothing to talk about because even all the shit stuff on next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll well, we'll probably keep that to um, yeah, yeah that or just not talk about it at all. <laughs> We've not talked about that. Yeah. We've not talked about Robo being on Sam Allardyce's podcast. We've dodged a couple of bullets, I reckon, there when I was not talking about that this week. Well, thank you for having me, and I've, I hope I haven't hysterically screamed. No, it's been great. Thanks don't, for don't recall on. that happening. Re- rewind it, John. I'm going to rewind check. it. I'm going to stick it in anyway. Oh, blimey. Vicar. <laughs> 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 
think we should just now I think we should just finish there. Huh? We'll see you next week when we'll be talking about season God. tickets and <laughs> Robbo's podcast. See you next week. Say bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye everyone. <laughs>